What's up, what's up, and welcome back to my channel. So I have been a little bit MIA lately because I have this kind of crazy medical scare, I guess, which if you wanna hear more about, by all means, comment story time below. I have been wanting to do one of those for a while and I think that this would probably be the perfect story to share. Anyways, now that I'm back and everything is back to normal, I am here to teach you about glutes. He like it when I made his ass vibrate. Today I'm going to teach you how to grow your glutes without getting bulky thighs. So this video is actually going to address two of the most common questions I get from women. The first being how can I lift weights without getting bulky? So bulky in this context would mean getting fat, having a square like shape, starting to look more manly. And the second question being how to grow your butt without growing your thighs. Basically, how to get that Kim K look. So I'm kind of making faces because both of these questions I get so often that I just, I want to shake you, right? Um, but I think it's really important that I take the time to address it in this video so you have one place to come and get that information. So if you have ever wondered or felt afraid to ask these questions, go ahead and click that thumbs up button right now. The more thumbs up, the more engagement these videos get, the more people who can get the answers to these questions. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna break our lesson down into three parts. What you're doing wrong right now, the strategy I would use to fix it, and then the specific exercises I would recommend as part of that strategy. Starting with the elephant in the room, squats. I am so fed up with seeing comments along the lines of, squat booty, squats pay off, never skip leg day, never skip squats, like stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. It's, the list goes on, but you've probably seen comments like that before as well. Let me make something very clear. This booty did not happen from squats. Squats did not create this transformation. Here's the thing. Squats are a great compound exercise for building a strong muscular foundation. Squats are great for athletes who want to develop power. Squats are also a really versatile exercise in the sense that you can get really creative with variations of it. And y'all know I love getting creative in the gym, but what squats are not good at is isolating your glutes. Even when you apply all the different mind muscle connection, flaring your toes out, all the different glute isolation tricks to the squat, the squat is still a vastly inferior exercise when it comes to isolating and really hitting the glutes hard so that you can build them up. A story that I hear all too often is that women will start weightlifting, which is great. Women will start weightlifting, they will start doing squats with either the Smith machine or dumbbells or maybe those pre-weighted barbells at the gym. And as they get stronger and more confident in the gym, they'll move up to the barbell. So once they start doing traditional barbell squats, they will get stronger and stronger, add more and more weight. And this is all great, like this is so awesome. But as they get stronger, as they increase the weight on the bar, as they become more consistent with their routine, they realize that something kind of weird's going on. Instead of building that big round booty that they want, they realize that they're actually growing all over. So yes, their glutes and their booty is growing, but their thighs are also growing. And so by growing all over, they no longer have the proportions that they wanted when they first started. So even though they've accomplished a lot, even though they've gotten a lot stronger, gotten more confident in the gym, probably accomplished so many other things as a result of this, they become upset, they become discouraged, they get frustrated, and their training basically goes downhill. Okay, so how do we fix this? There is this concept called training specificity. Basically, what that means is what you're doing in the gym should be relevant to your desired outcome or your goal body. This seems simple enough. You would think that squats would be the logical exercise to do if you want to build a booty. Well, yes, squats will build your glutes, but you probably should have specified that you wanted to build your glutes more proportionate to the rest of your lower body. Like I said before, there are a lot of exercises that will better target and build the booty than just squats. Now, if you love your squats and you wanna keep doing squats, don't worry, you can still include squats in your routine because like I said before, they are a great compound exercise. That said, they should not be the primary focus of your programming if your goal is to build your booty. Okay, so I found this super cool chart when I was scouring Brett Contreras' website, which if you do not know about him, he is the glute master. If glute building were a martial art, he would be the senpai to senpais. He would have like the multiple degree black belt and I would be over here fangirling working on maybe my brown belt. Something like that. This 
chart shows you the relative glute activation, basically how well an exercise targets your glutes, and it's broken down by exercise, which is awesome. So, like I said before, we want to focus on building the glutes, but building the glutes with the caveat that we're building them more than the rest of our lower body. So, when you're reading this chart, what you want to look for are exercises with very high glute EMG values and with, I guess, kind of as low as possible EMG values for the other lower body muscle groups. All right, I scrolled through those charts pretty quick because I'm going to guess you don't want to compare numbers on numbers on numbers with me. Instead, I'm going to show you exercise videos of the winners when it comes to most isolated glute engagement. First up, the barbell sumo deadlift. I like this deadlift variation because regardless of whether I'm using a lightweight for higher reps, as I am in this video, or heavyweight for lower reps, I still get very good glute engagement. The key for me to nail this exercise was to start in a semi-squat position with back flat and chest up. Basically press through the knees for the first quarter-ish of the exercise or until the bar is at shin level. Then complete the range of motion by hinging at the hips as you would a regular deadlift squeeze for every inch of this exercise. If you've been watching my videos for a while now, you know I love anything hip thrust related. Nail this exercise and you will get epic glute gains. What made the biggest difference for me was figuring out the right bench height and then positioning my shoulder blades correctly on it. I recommend a bench about a foot to a foot and a half off the ground. Any more than that and I find my movement gets a bit awkward and jerky. Next up, barbell glute bridge. Honestly, I've never been able to get comfortable with heavy barbell glute bridges. I've always felt like the barbell was slipping or my shoulders were slipping or the bar was just not right. Instead, I prefer to do a higher rep but more challenging body rep versions of this exercise. Here, I'm doing single leg elevated glute bridges. I'll usually superset these with a heavier compound lift like barbell hip thrusts or use them as part of an at-home routine. Next, scorcher hip thrusts. A scorcher hip thrust technically requires this fancy gym equipment that I don't even think they sell commercially. So my makeshift setup uses heavy dumbbells, you can also use a squat rack with pegs, to hold the band down and a bench for my shoulder support. Perform these as a regular hip thrust, just instead of a barbell you have bands. Really emphasize the glute squeeze at the top here. Next, bent leg back extension. Since I don't have video footage of these, here's a straighter leg glute ham raise. The glute ham raise movement is pretty similar to the back extension movement, just at a slightly different angle. You, you can, can perform either with straight or more bent legs. The bent legs will help minimize hamstring, back of thigh engagement and boost glute engagement. And finally, cable pull through. These are basically a cable version of a kettlebell swing or the vertical version of a hip thrust. However you want to think of it. I learned a cool new trick the other day where instead of putting the pulley all the way at the bottom, you raise it about a foot off the ground so that this is a more of a horizontal only movement, therefore getting even more glute engagement as you thrust forward. So yay, glutes. All right, that's all for today. I seriously hope that you found this video eye-opening because I am so fed up of either having girls comment on, you know, squat videos and saying, this is what we need to do, you know, 100 squats a day, squat challenge, or having people comment, squat booty, never misses squat day, never misses leg day. No, it's not squats. It is hip thrusts and deadlifts and glute bridges and all these crazy variations, okay? It's not just squats. If I kind of rocked your world with this and you are now questioning everything you know and trying to overhaul your program all at once, don't worry. I put together a quick little sample glute routine. I've already sent it out to my email insiders, but I would like you to get a chance to check it out as well. So if you click the top link in the description box below, you can join my email insider list and get your hands on this sample glute workout. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.